Hello and welcome to Fish and Forage. My name is Zach and today we are going out for some early chanterelles. It's pretty early in the season. There hasn't been a huge amount of rain yet. So we're kind of just scouting to see if something's popping up. So we're in the Pacific Northwest uh, up on the coast range looking for chanterelles. We thought it was gonna be a little sparse, but turns out, turns out we might be wrong. <laughs> so we've already found a couple, but I want to kind of go over just the basics of how to find these things and what to look for. Some basics of identification. As always, if you are new to mushroom hunting, I highly recommend going out with someone who knows what they're doing, at least at first, so they can properly identify your mushrooms because eating the wrong mushrooms is bad and it can kill you or otherwise make you want to die with sickness. So definitely be careful. And if you have a resource of someone who can go out with you, definitely take them along so they can teach you the ropes. Today, I'm gonna to go over the basics of how to find these things, how I find them, what we do to harvest them, and I'll probably uh, probably take some home and cook them up in the kitchen. We'll do a little, uh, little forage and cook or forage and fry or whatever you wanna call it to, to rhyme. But let's go ahead and pick some of these mushrooms and get going. The forest that we, we like to focus on are pine forests with some ferns here and there. So you can see there's some ferns here. We got a lot of ferns over here. Ferns seem to be a good indicator, but it doesn't need to be a very dense forest. So you can see that there's quite a lot of space in the, in the underbrush here. So you can kind of see long ways. You're not, uh, you know, you're not tripping over a bunch of bushes and other fallen trees and whatnot. They do grow in other types of forests. So this is one type of forest uh, that we've seen them in. They also grow in uh, some deciduous forests. Uh, we found them. So they're kind of all over the place when they're in season. One small interlude here. Uh, definitely try to stay within the elevation of 700 feet on the coast range up to four or 5,000 feet when you go inland to like the Cascades or other mountain ranges. Those are the, the good elevations we've found. But this is a good beginner one because you can see like, this is super, super easy to see. So it's like, obviously, you know, we found these ones, but then if you just look around where you found one, like if I look over here, there's some more. And I think there's even more. And Jess is whistling, yeah. So there's even more over here. There. Is that once you find one mushroom or one group, look around the area like everywhere. Get down low, you know, get a different angle. See what you can see from that first initial mushroom. Because there's most likely gonna be more of them. I can see some over there. So that's the first good tip is if you find one, stick around the area comb it real, real nice. Make sure you look in, underneath all the branches, under the ferns, just make sure you do a good sweep of that area. So you found your mushrooms, now you need to actually harvest them. So I recommend using a knife. I have a knife with a brush on one end. This is obviously not it, but if you have one of those, that's even better. Clear way around it a little bit. And then I try to get as low as I can. Sometimes I even like cut into the ground a little bit because you want to get as much mushroom as possible. And then you just cut that up. You can see it has a bunch of dirt on it. These are actually really dry because it's been so dry. But these are definitely chanterelles. Kind of clean off the dirt. That brush is really nice because you can just brush it off right away. A lot of times I'll end up just cutting off the bottoms of these. Just leaving that dirty part in the ground. But uh, these are definitely chanterelles. So the, the defining characteristics of these guys is this orange color. Uh, they do come in white and sometimes even black. There's black chanterelles, but that orange color, they have a solid stem, so there's no hollow stem there. The cap is often kind of not even. You see it's kind of, on these, it's all kind of wiggly a little bit. There's not, It's not a perfect circle often. And then finally, one of the biggest tells is these kind of faux gills. They're not let me see if I can get it focused right. They're not gills, they're actually kind of like veins. And they start at the top and there's a seamless transition between these, between the cap and the stem. So if you see any mushrooms where it's a definite distinctive line around the cap to the stem, that's not a chanterelle. So these are definitely nice chanterelles. And they're a little bit, they're a little bit dry right now because the, there's just been not enough water, uh, not enough rain. But these are perfect. These will cook up great. You actually kind of fry the moisture out of them anyway. So this is just means that there's less moisture 
uh, to fry out of them. You can also smell them. So they smell somewhat like like light and earthy, but sometimes people get an, an apricot smell to them. So that's another way to tell. There are some false chanterelles, and oftentimes they'll have gills. They look similar, but they'll be more gilly. So you gotta watch out for those. There's also um, jack-o'-lanterns and a couple other ones, but really the as long as the stem is, is solid and you have these gills that aren't real gills, they're not true gills, they're more like veins, uh, and they there's no distinct mark or difference between the cap and the stem, you're most likely holding a chanterelle. And we definitely got a bunch to harvest here, so I'm gonna harvest all these. I'm gonna leave these little buttons because they're gonna grow a little bit more, but I'll take these bigger ones. And if you find chanterelles, then you can come back year after year to the same spot and find more because they keep growing back in the same area. Mark your, your private maps with some of your chanterelle spots. So another tip is I use cloth bags. So we have these guys, which are like the grocery tote bags that they give out everywhere now. Uh, there is also laundry bags that we have. Jess actually has one now. But essentially you want a cloth bag where uh, spores can, can release through here and fall on the ground. Because if, if you have a plastic bag, then the spores can't release and you can't re-propagate your area. So if you have a cloth bag and you're carrying these around, your mushrooms are moving around, it lets those spores fall out. And uh, come next year, come back, you'll have more where you left those spores. So that's all for this spot. But again, I'm going to look around. I know there's more here. We're gonna find some and we're gonna we're gonna harvest those as well. So let's go and hunt those down. Don't forget your knife. I have this terrible habit with harvesting some chanterelles and then leaving my my knife on the ground right next to them, and then I panic later when I find the next batch and I, I lose I lost my knife. So as you see right here, so I was literally picking them like right over there. And here's another one just on the other side of the tree. And if I didn't look around, it wasn't in line of sight, so I wouldn't have been able to find it. So that's a good example of if you find one, definitely look around the area for more. Cut that out. Boom, look at that guy. Nice little guy. Now sometimes they're very sneaky. Like, <laughs> this is literally underneath some roots here there's a little guy poking out hiding not quite a button a little little bigger we'll keep him that's a keeper so another tip for you guys is we're not really that far from the road like we just go up to like public land like national national parks uh, national forests state parks so we're not like running around hiking miles and miles and miles in. We're just going honestly right off the road. So you can find these things pretty close to the road. So you don't need to worry about hiking miles out into the wilderness to find them. They're, they're luckily pretty easy to find uh, nearby. Where, oh, where are the mushrooms? We found a couple in the same area, but now it seems to be sparse. Sometimes when I'm walking, I'll stop and turn around and look behind me because a lot of times they're hiding behind like the hills or the roots or the trees and you don't actually uh, you don't actually catch them until you turn around and look from a different angle. Not the case this time. And if you don't find anything within, I don't know, like 10 or 15 minutes of scouting an area pretty good. A lot of times I'll just recommend getting in the car and driving another half mile, quarter mile away and checking again. Usually when the season's on, they are pretty easy to find. If you're, if you're in the right area. Oh, what's this? That is a leaf. An orange leaf. Welcome to chanterelle hunting, where every orange leaf looks like a mushroom. Oh, just whistled. So if you're out here with friends, I do recommend getting some sort of whistled communication going. So you can go find your friends if, they, if you lose them. Usually when she whistles, it means she found some mushrooms, so let's go check it out. Some Marco Polo whistling going on here. Check this out, guys. This one is a big, 
at my hand compared to that. Might be one of those saddlebacks, saddle mushrooms. You can see it has true gills. It's like those papery like gills. Those are the true gills, whereas those chanterelles have the uh, the vein type vein type gills. Pretty cool though. Lots of lots of cool mushrooms out here. Another tip for you guys is if you have a mushroom and you don't know what it is, you can always take one home. Take a lot of pictures of it on the, the top, the bottom, the stem. Um, cut it. If it bruises different colors, it could be an uh, identifier. You can make spore prints, which I don't, I won't get into, but if you want to, you can go look online for spore print how-tos. Because uh, a lot of times the color of the spores and the pattern of the spores after making that spore print is another way to identify them. Lots of cool stuff. What? Yes, if you know the tree it was growing on or near, you can take note of that. And that's another identifier because some mushrooms only grow on certain plants or certain dead trees or whatnot. Lots of different things to think about. Um, if they're underneath certain trees, so even if they're not growing on a dead tree, but they're underneath certain trees, that's another identifier. So take a lot of notes. Pay attention to the trees around you, the plants around you, uh, your geographic location. All these things can help people identify mushrooms for you. If you are looking for like how to identify an unknown mushroom, take note of all those things. There's a lot of books that you can look at for reference. A lot of good Facebook groups with a lot of really knowledgeable people uh, that you can post your pictures to and ask. Lots of information in out on the internet. So take note of all those things. Take, take an example home with you. Uh, compare it to your books. Go online. Ask a bunch of smart people. So there's certainly a lot of people who know way more than I do about all sorts of mushrooms. But definitely don't assume that it's safe unless you are yourself 110% confident that it's the mushroom you're looking for. Yep, don't eat bad mushrooms. <laughs> Can you spot the mushrooms? Maybe right there. Right there. I can spot them. Just a handful. But a good looking handful at that. I think this place, like this whole area is gonna be exploding with them as soon as we get like a couple days of good rain. Yeah, I think this place is gonna be crazy. Da, da, da. So if you happen to walk by and sort of see one, just peeking out under uh, some shrubs or some of the moss, definitely be sure to like lift any plants. I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, it's he, literally he... coming out of the ground right here, these little guys. And they just push their way up, so anything on top of them might still be there, hiding them. We always joke that we think we're just walking on top of them every time we go out, and we're probably probably right, because they're just, just very well hidden. Beautiful, this is a really good specimen. Check this out, guys. This shows off a lot of the really good characteristics. So those fake gills there, you see they're not papery, but they have a little bit of meat to them and they just go smooth down from the cap to the stem. This is a solid stem, don't mind that, that was a cut mark, but the stem itself is, is solid, doesn't go through at all. This is a prime specimen, very prime. Textbook chanterelle, perfect color. It's got that wavy cap, those false gills. Beautiful, beautiful mushroom. Very, very good mushroom, excited. So, every so often you do get a little bit lucky with mushroom hunting. We've been finding like the onesies, twosies here and there, but now we found definitely the first solid patch of the year. Check this out. Oh yeah, this is what you wanna see. This isn't even a big patch, but you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a bunch right here. All in this one little area. So when the season's really hot, this is actually common. You'll see like big groups of these all over and you can really, really stack up or stock up on them. But this is a good first 
patch of the year. So let's harvest this guy. Let's harvest this little group here. This. Oh, look at this. Look. All, what? It's like opening a present. You found more? Yeah. <laughs> so Jess is digging through like the moss and the dirt and she's, there's more like full, look at that, show the camera. Full mushrooms just underneath. But this is all from that patch. This is definitely what we want. This is a good haul. If you find one of these, then you're lucky. You did well. Yeah, check them out. Oh wow, look at that. Did you see that? <laughs> it was huge. It was just underneath the dirt just a little bit. Sue Chef Finnegan here helping out with the mushroom cleaning. Yeah, aren't you? Yeah, no, no bites. Alright guys, we are back in the kitchen. We have some of our haul cleaned. Check it out. This isn't even all of it, but I wanted to go over a quick how-to on just preparing and cleaning them once they're in your kitchen. So, all you need is a, a faucet some light, I use cold water and some light pressure. And now you have your chanterelles, which... Come <laughs> <laughs> here, again. Ow. Really? All right, so you have our chanterelles, which you've brushed off as, be as best as possible. Now, I never really have a problem with bugs being inside the chanterelles, so usually just kind of rinsing them off. And what I do is I'll put my... Uh, I'll put it under the water and we want to try to do this fast because it'll actually absorb water. So you want to just use this time, to just use your fingernails, scrape off some of the dirt, wipe off the stuff that you can notice, just real quick like. If you have any uh, debris on there, just this is a good time to, to get that off and you can inspect it better for like any mold or other bad parts, but as long as you don't really have any big particulates on there. You're in pretty good shape, you know, like a little dirt never hurt anyone, so this is pretty clean. I mean, you send it over here, I put it on some paper towel, and then move on to the next one. So the, the idea is that you're just kind of doing a surface level clean, getting on any big dirt chunks off, any pine needles or whatnot. Because you're going to cook these all up anyway, so it's not a big deal if there's any tiny, tiny bits of, uh, bits of dirt or anything. Sometimes you've got to use your fingernails to kind of scrape away some of the dirt. Some of these edges, this is just because it's dry. It's not necessarily dirty or anything. But that's it. Pretty easy. So I'm going to finish cleaning all of these up, guys. And then we are going to eat some delicious chanterelle omelets. Excited. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned a little bit on how to find these chanterelles, where to look for them, how to scout for them. You know, definitely, uh, definitely good out in the woods and, and just explore. It's kind of the biggest thing is, is uh, getting out there and just kind of finding where they are near you. But I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, put them down below in the in the comments. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you haven't yet. If this is helpful at all to you, definitely think about subscribing. Hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, you didn't fill the screen. What? You didn't fill the screen. Oh.